Oh my goodness, wait a second, I'm recording something? Oh! Um, <laughs> the following video is actually going to show you what happens when you're learning a song on the guitar. What happens in your working memory? And I'm trying to, you know, talk about working memory as we're actually doing something. So first of all, what is this 3D learning? And let me just set this over here. So 3D learning is a multi-sensory, you know, learning theory about how we learn, what happens in our mind when we're actually learning, what happens when we're doing anything. You know, it extends, it's an extension of a lot of the dual um, coding, dual channel uh, methodologies or, you know, learning theories out there like dual coding and cognitive theory of multimedia learning, cognitive effective theory of multimedia learning, and it adds to that multi-sensory learning, you know, literature base so that it's 3d learning it's what's really happening and the reason that I'm, I have I'm playing the guitar here is because I'm showing how it expands just beyond this duel of like reading and seeing all right so learning the guitar so what happens first of all in our memory so we have these three channels right we have sensory memory which is like our input like when we first receive this information then we have our working memory which is where we're doing stuff and then we have our long-term memory which is like where we store everything and, and you know we can break down long-term memory a little more some of the literature does but we're not going to do that here all right so what's happening so first of all, 3D learning says that we have multiple channels. We're using multiple things. These things are not competing with each other, right? So there are really three different things, three different types of things happening at the same time when we're learning a song on the guitar. And how do we, you know, there are a bunch of instructional strategies how we learn a song on the guitar. But there is basically one, you know, main strategy that most of the online sites will use. So that main thing that all the sites will do is you learn a song by, you know, in chunks. So you learn, like, might learn the intro, then you might learn the verse, then you might learn the chorus, and then at the end you piece it all together. So, you, you know, what you're storing in long-term memory are pieces of the song. So that's really the main way that you learn a song on the guitar. So what's happening when you're doing that? All right, so in our sensory memory, we have these three different things happening. We have our ears processing information. We have our... Uh, you know, our hands processing information and we have our eyes processing information. So what all is happening in working memory? What are we processing and what are we doing? Okay, so we have this verbal channel, the ver our verbal information, which is going to be um, everything that we're hearing that we're playing, the, all the stuff we're playing and what we're singing. So there are two different things that we're hearing, our body's hearing. Um, we have our visual channel. What are we visualizing? I'm visualizing either notes or chords and then I'm also visualizing the words that I'm going to be singing right and you can see like we're doing each of these channels is doing multiple things which is is using up um, our working memory because our working memory is you know only has a limited capacity and each of these channels it's like we're you know the visual channel we have we're looking at words and we're looking at notes so there's competition there within the visual channel and you know too much of that competition can really really throw us off pretty quickly right you know too much competition in just the visual channel throws us off a lot more quickly than competition for working memory from say two separate channels right um, you know it's a lot easier to for example it's a lot easier to look and listen than it is to try to look at two different things right you know I can't look here and look here look here look here then if I could just look in one place and listen right it's so there's some competition there and resources and then we have this final kinesthetic channel which is our hands and our hands we have one hand strumming a pattern next hand playing chords and notes right so how are we learning how is this happening so you know so as we're playing you know I to learn a song each piece of the song like the intro is stored in long-term memory so i can pull it out when i learn the next piece and i can learn the intro and all of a sudden hey i, I know that i'm going to work on the verse then all of a sudden i can play the intro and then the verse right so that's our long-term memory what's happening i have some background knowledge i know how to play notes i know how to read notes but really the idea of 3d learning and what's happening is that we can process these three things at the same time and you have to in order to play the guitar it cannot be done otherwise you know because i am i'm doing things with my hands i'm doing and i'm learning at the same time i'm learning how to do it with my hands i'm using my voice and and uh 
listening at the same time. I got to be able to listen. My ears have to be picking up, looking for tone and things that aren't happening correctly, right? Um, and then I'm also, I have to be able to look. So I can look at the notes and words. I can listen to the, everything that's happening and, and make sure it sounds right. And I can strum at the same time. You're able to do that because these things aren't interfering with each other. They're, inter they're using up your resources, but they're not interfering with each other. What I'm seeing and hearing are not interfering. What I'm playing isn't interfering with what I'm seeing. Um, so we, we do, you know, there's a lot of evidence for these three channels. And this is just a, you know, an example that I'm using just out of real life. But we have research backing up that we have these multiple channels as well. And I'm going to do some more videos on those. This was just an example of how 3D learning is used to explain how we do tasks. Thank you. Bye.